Hello, everybody. This is Giancarlo Alino, and I am happy to be joined by my guest today. If you're a Leafs fan, you've definitely heard of this guy. He is a Sportsnet blogger and host of the Steve Dangle podcast. Steve Dangle, welcome to be on the game, Steve. Hey, thank you. I mean, they might know me. That doesn't necessarily mean they like me. <laughs> How you doing today? I'm good. I uh, just got off the ice. I'm uh, teaching my myself how to skate and i'm a total plug that's good uh steve leaf fans that are familiar with your broadcasting career and all that you post lfrs leaf fan reaction videos on your youtube page after every leaf game now this is a 12th season that you've been doing these type of videos (laughs) i want to just give our listeners a better idea of the origins of this like how did you come up with this idea and did you think it'd become as popular as it is now oh my god well i came up with the idea of um kind of when I was half in the bag one day. I was in my, uh, just beginning my second year of university. Um, I made a video after the first game of the uh, 07 08 season, made another one after the second game. And at some point during a night where I was pre drinking with my friends, um, I decided, wouldn't it be, uh, you know, a fun side project, almost like a self appointed internship? to do a video after every single game. Uh, and they sucked. They were awful. They were all, you know, one take on a crappy webcam in my, you know, bedroom at my parents' house. And, uh, but for some reason, I guess because I was uh, enough of a lunatic, they, uh, you know, people started watching, you know, and a dozen turned into a couple dozen, turned into a few hundred. And now uh, a few years later in 2018, um, we're at, I think, 90,000 subscribers and 23 or some odd million views. It's bananas. And the podcast to boot. Yeah, and uh, you got into your broadcasting career around the same time social media and uh, YouTube's like streaming services started becoming bigger and bigger. Uh, in what ways would you say streaming sites like YouTube and uh, social media sites and platforms like for podcasting have changed a profession for you? Well, I wouldn't have one uh, without those things, you know. Um, YouTube was sort of coming into its own. Like, it was was a place where you could watch, you know, cool videos and, you know, people might do a one-off and it would go viral and then that'd be the end of it. But it wasn't until, you know, I saw guys like Philip DeFranco that I realized, you know, oh, you can do this all the time. But that wasn't, you know, no one was making money off of it and certainly no one took it seriously at all um so i just kind of stuck with it and uh you know good thing too um you know and and it was it was it was a tough go sort of um you know convincing people to take it seriously but um you know i i I remember one dinner in particular i was with a former boss of mine we were talking about twitter this is in like 2009 and he's like yeah it's a fat It'll pass. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. And al- almost a decade later, uh, you know, it's going pretty strong. So your podcast, too, uh, the Steve Dangle podcast that you have with Adam Wilde, when did that idea come about? Did you say, like, I want to focus on hockey or other sports? Like, was that just another idea that just came out together, just like your YouTube page? Uh, Adam and I came up with that idea in 2004 when we were in grade 11. Um, we were sitting in class one day and sort of talking about our, you know, dreams and aspirations. And uh, I, I honestly didn't know what I wanted to do. You know, in high school, I thought, you know, well, I love talking about sports, but I don't know how to do them. So um, that's that's going to be detrimental. But I like I like cracking jokes and making people laugh, and I like writing. So you know, why don't I try to like write for a sitcom? Which in Canada would have been a you know. A that's not the greatest idea for job security. You know, even if you write for the best sitcom in the country, you win a couple Geminis, then get canceled after after two seasons. Um, but it, I don't know how it came up in conversation. Adam goes, one day we're going to have a sports show together. And so he, his, his career started a lot earlier than mine. He decided to drop out of school. He took a job in Halifax. Um, he came home to Toronto for a little while and was off to Calgary again. And once once he figured out that he was going to be in Toronto for uh, at least a few years, um, he came to me with the idea of, hey, remember that idea from grade 11? Let's make a go of it. So we started a podcast. I had like a sort of a pre-built audience, right, from, you know, half a decade or so of, of um, making LFR videos on my YouTube channel. And we had like a thousand listens the first show, and, and I was just texting the guys last night. I think we get about 50,000 people listening to the show on YouTube and SoundCloud and all that. So it's, it's been pretty wild. 
Uh, for those just joining us on Vibe 105, this is Giancarlo Alino of Beyond the Game speaking with the host of the Steve Dangle podcast, Steve Dangle. Uh, Steve, we're going to get right into the Leafs now because the team sent a strong message to the rest of the league by bringing in John Tavares this summer. Like, they're not playing around anymore. They're going all in for that cup. Uh, we've only had a small sample size of this team with John Tavares in the lineup, but how would you say he's uh, impacted this young Leafs core? Well, I mean, they wouldn't be doing very well without him, would they? Uh, they only got 13 goals so far, and he's got four of them, uh, including a hat trick in that garbage fire of a game against Chicago that they luckily came away with a win in. But, um, you know, the team's problem is still pretty clearly defense. But I think Jupiter sort of helps stabilize that. If you're strong down the middle, it definitely helps you, A, hold on to the puck so that the other team can't score on you. But, uh, B, you know, you're more responsible with the forwards getting back. You know, everyone points at the Leafs defensemen, and granted, they haven't always been great, but there have been a lot of occasions where forwards should have bailed them out, and they didn't, or they didn't know where they were going. And then Matthews is part of that, too. You know, he's young, and he's expected to, you know, contend for the Selkie Trophy and stuff throughout his career, but he's he's just not there yet. So uh, Tavares Tavares addresses uh, a need and also a strength at the same time. Uh, Yeah, you brought up Austin Matthews there, and during the preseason, uh, Babcock announced that Tavares would be one of the assistant captains, but there was that notable omission. Uh, Austin Matthews wasn't included in that. Now, there there have been some interviews with both of them where they've been asked the same question, like, oh, would you be happy for Tavares, or would you be happy for Matthews if they become captain? And they say the same thing, right? Like, they don't want that tension built up. If you're in Mike Babcock and Kyle Dubas' shoes right now, do you make John Tavares a captain based on his experience in the Islanders, or would you go with the potential, like the Selkie and Austin Matthews in the future? Um, I, I don't screw it up, and I wait till next year. You know, it, it all seems part of the plan. What, what seems obvious to me is it's going to eventually be Austin Matthews. Um, you know, he didn't have the A this year, um, but they could have just given the C to Tavares if they want, and they didn't do that, which to me indicates they're sort of keeping it open. But you know what? I don't think anyone should be worrying about this because, uh, you know, the Leafs had a captain for a few years named Dion Phaneuf, and it didn't really help. Yeah. You know, it's it's just a, it's a letter. And, you know, people forget that the letter's supposed to represent the guys who talk to the ref the most. You know, like I, I had someone ask, well, Kadri's a veteran with this team. He's been in the league for a long time. Why not give him a letter? I'm like, because the refs hate him. <laughs> <laughs> That's why. Um, so I, I don't think it's a big deal. Uh, once again, for those just joining us on Vibe 105, this is Giancarlo Alino of Beyond the Game speaking with the host of the Steve Dangle podcast, Steve Dangle. Uh, Steve, another name that the Leafs have been missing right now is William Nylander. And there was a little bit back and forth. These two sides are still very far apart on a new deal. And Kyle Dubas made that big claim. We can and we will re-sign all our RFAs. Uh, looking at this team, though, you brought up before, like the defense has been getting the criticism from fans from the media if you see William Nylander right now an asset that they have should they look at trading him instead to acquire that top defenseman well the problem is you're gonna have to pay that top defenseman too you you know and and believe me I've asked myself that over the past few days you know would they be better off trading him and oh they could get this guy oh well that guy makes five or six million dollars well, they could get that guy. Well, that guy makes $7 million. They could get this guy. Well, this guy's a rookie, but the other team's not going to give him up. And even if they do, the Leafs are going to have to resign him, and he's probably going to make six, seven, eight million dollars $8 So the, the good thing about what the Leafs have with Nylander is they have like, too much talent, basically. Yeah. Um, you know, these guys are going to get paid because uh, they have to be. They're not arbitrarily giving some fourth-line plug $8 million. bucks. Uh, what William Nylander's earned this. Uh, you know, worst case scenario, the Leafs would be able to trade Nylander for someone who can help the team now, futures, picks, all sorts of things. But I think what they're going to do is address what makes them special, which is their offense. And uh, you add Nylander to this already dangerous offense, they're going to have to puck 90% of the game. Um, I think the way this will end up is with the player buckling. Because that's how it always ends up. I'm not just saying that, like, out of optimism as a Leafs fan. Unless you're the Oilers who just, you know, you make the playoffs for the first time in a decade or whatever it is, and you just just give Dreisaitl whatever you want. You know, Dubas Dubas needs to be better than us. You know what I mean? 
he, he needs to be less reactionary than fans. If it was me, I'd probably be like, just take the money, Willie. I'm sorry. <laughs> but he's a GM, man. That's why he makes the bucks. Uh, Steve, before we wrap up here and let you go, how can our listeners follow you on social media and where can they listen to your podcast? Oh my God, just Google Steve Dangle. There's too many things. Uh, <laughs> on, I'm on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle. Instagram, Steve Dangle, all one word. YouTube, all one word. Uh, Steve Dangle Podcast on YouTube. Steve Dangle Podcast on SoundCloud. Uh, Steve Dangle Podcast on Spotify. That's new. Uh, on iTunes. And uh, I got a book coming out in March that's available for pre-order right now called This Team is Ruining My Life. And that is available all sorts of places. Buy it, please. It was hard to write. Writing books is hard. <laughs> uh, Steve, I'd like to thank you for sharing your time and coming on Beyond the Game to talk Leafs with me. And I wish you all the best. Ciao, Bella. <laughs> That was Sportsnet blogger and host of the Steve Dangle podcast, Steve Dangle. Now, we're going to send it back to the studio for more Beyond the Game right here on Vibe 105. Hey, this is Steve Dangle, and you're listening to Beyond the Game. You are Tavares, you're the lead! You think he's actually going to sign their deal? Matthews, Nylander, Marlo, Tavares, Marner, Janssen, Kadri, Kapanen. He's had a 105-point season with that Swiss cheese D. You know what they didn't do it with? John Tavares! Beyond the Game, your main source, Vibe 105.